Hey everyone, I am Vipa Khandalwal and I welcome you all to our Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will talk about one of the interesting topics that are c -sharp primitive types and variables. But before we begin, let me tell you guys we have daily updates on multiple technologies. So if you are a tech geek in a continuous hunt for our latest technological advancements, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update on Simply Learn. Now, without any further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. We will begin the session with the variable. Then we will discuss the types of variables. After that, we will discuss the primitive types of variables in detail. Finally, we will wind up this session with an implementation on c -sharp variables. Now, let's get started with what a variable is. A variable is simply the name provided to a storage location that our programs can access. In c -sharp programming, each variable has a type that governs the size and layout of the variable's memory, the range of values that can be stored inside that memory and a set of operations that can be applied to that variable. Each variable data type must match the data type of the value stored in that variable. When we declare a variable, the system reserves a piece of memory equal to the variable size. Now, let's have a look at the types of variables. There are two types of variables in c -sharp. First, primitive type variables and reference or object variables. In this session, we will focus on primitive variables and we will only discuss strings from the object-based variables. Now, Let's discuss them in detail. First up, primitive types. The data types which are built in the main function are called primitive data types. Primitive data types can be further divided into numbers and truth values. The numbers are then divided into signed and unsigned data types. Let's have a look at them in detail. First up, signed data type. We have tabulated the characteristics to differentiate them. We will start with signed byte. Its value range dangles between minus 128 to 127. Then we have short. This one has a lot of memory space and its value range is from minus 32k to positive 32k. After this we have an int or integer data type. It is the most utilized data type in any programming language. Its value goes from minus 2 billion to positive 2 billion. At last, we have long data type. This can store an incredibly large value variable. Now, let's have a look at unsigned data type. Unsigned data type can only store positive values. We will start with a byte. Its value range dangles between 0 to 255. Then we have unsigned short or u short. This one has a lot of memory space than byte and its value range is from 0 to 65 grand. After this, we have uint or unsigned integer data type. Its value goes from 0 to 4 billion. At last, we have ulong or unsigned long data type. This can store an incredibly large value variable and these were the integer based primitive data types. Now, let's take a look at floating point types. There are three types of floating point type variables, float, double and decimal. Now, floating points types are after a point just an approximate value. Now they are differentiated based on the precision digit. Now these precision points may differ based on how big or small a value is. Now let's discuss a few more types of data type. First up, char. This one store characteristics which are in theory unicodes, essentially a number. Next up, boolean. This variable stores truth and false values. These are usually used in conditional statement. Next up is an honorary primitive type, which is string. Usually a string is not considered a primitive type, but in C sharp it is not the case. 
string can contain a word or a sentence. Now let's try these variables in a code editor. Let's start with signed integer types. First up, s byte. Let this variable be sb and equals to negative 120. Next up, short. s is equals to 30,000. and i should be equals to let's take a big number so around 2 billion next up we have long l equals to let's check a bigger number than the 2 billion Now let's try to print them. So we can use console dot write line sb and then s then we have i then we have l let's save them and print it as you can see it is printing minus 120 for the s byte and 30,000 for short, 2 billion for integer and a big number for a long. Now let's try some different types of integers. Let's use unsigned integers. Unsigned integer type. Now we will have byte x b is equals to one twenty two. Then we will have U short US is equals to let's say. 60,123. Next, we have uint. ui is equals to, since we can go up to 4 billion, so let's take 400 million. Then we have u long. us is equals to we can give it any big number now let's try and print them we can copy these and change the variable name This is B, this is UI, this is UI, this is UI. And let's save them. Let's comment them as well. To 
to avoid confusion. Now let's save and run them again. As you can see, now they are printing the byte well, byte, u short, u int, and u long. Now let's comment everything. Now let's discuss the floating point types. Let's start with the float. Let's take value as 12.7. Now you have to remember when defining a float, we need to give f as its as last character in its value. Then we have double d is equals to let's say twenty three point sixty seven then we have decimal dm is equals to ninety nine point one zero seven nine now this also should end with an m Now let's try to print them. This one should be F. The next one should be D. Then D M. Let's save them and run them again. Now as you can see it is printing the float value without an F, then a double value, then a decimal value without the M. Now let's try the boolean character and string values. Let's start with an care. Care C is equals to T. Another a boolean flag. And let's give it value as true. Let's also have a string str is equals to welcome to simply learn. Now let's try to print them. This time let's change the variable to C, then flag, then we have str. Now let's save them and run them again. Now as you can notice that for the character it is printing the same as it is character 
then the flag is it is printing true and for the string it is printing welcome to simply run we can also change the flag from true to false by just adding an exclamation point behind the number so let's save and run it and now you can see it is toggling between false now let's get back to our slides and this was all for today's session hope you guys found it informative and helpful if you like this session then like share and subscribe if you have any question then you can drop them in the comment section below thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from simply learn Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.